Hello students, welcome back to another exciting, yes, interesting and fun filled science class. The other day we talked about the different habitats, right? The different plants and animals found in terrestrial habitats like the desert, mountains and grasslands, you remember? And also about the aquatic habitats, the different plants and animals living in all these habitats. Today, children, we will talk about the characteristics. Okay, characteristics means what? The features or what makes us living. Okay, the characteristics of organisms. How we say that plants are living? How we say that plants, animals, human beings? How can we say that we are living? Let us see the characteristics of the organisms. The first, let us see. Tell me, students, do organisms need food? Do all the organisms, plants, animals, human beings, do we need food? Yes. The answer is yes. We all need food. What about the plants? Like I said, plants, we don't see the plants cooking by themselves, but they make their own food by the process of photosynthesis. Isn't it? See this. The plants, whether big or small, okay, whether they're trees or shrubs or herbs, they all make use of the sunlight. Okay, and they need food and they make their own food in the presence of sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide. They make food and that way the plants, they grow. So we need, we know now that plants need food, isn't it? Then we have here an animal feeding on the trees, the leaves of the trees. Then we have the squirrels. See, whether animals, they are small or big, they need food. Yes, the cow feeding on the grass. Yes. And what else? And we human beings, we depend on plants and animals. See all these different types of animals, cows, sheep, uh, chicken, uh, pigs. And we need food to survive. Yes or no? Man, human beings, we need food to survive. Animals, they need food to survive. Plants, they also need food to survive, to live. So we know that living organisms eat. Living organisms eat, okay? But rocks and soil and water, they don't eat. Non-living organisms, non-living things, they don't eat. But living organisms eat. Next, let us see, do organisms show growth? Organisms, do we grow? Yes? Yes, we grow. When you were, you know, one year old, how small were you? You were, you know, just one feet or one and a half feet. See this? You have grown from a baby, a toddler, the little girl, the young girl, and adult, right? See, we grow. We grow from baby stage to an adult. Yes, so human beings, we grow. That means we are living organisms. And this hen, okay, or a chicken, are they living? Yes, they are living. Why? Because they show growth. From the egg comes the chick, then the hen, okay, and it becomes a rooster, a big hen. So, Animals also, they grow. What about the plants? Do plants grow? Yes, see this? This is an apple. An apple has seeds inside, right? So the seeds, you plant it, then from the small seed, it'll germinate, give rise to small plants, sapling, and then a tree, and then a mature tree where you get the fruits. So from here, we know that organisms show growth. That means organisms grow. 
living organisms grow. That is the second characteristic. By this, we can say that living organisms grow. Now, do living organisms respire? Now, do you know what is respiration? Yes. Some of you may be knowing, some of you may not know. So let me tell you what is respiration. Respiration means it is the process by which oxygen we breathe in is used by the body and carbon dioxide is given out in this process. And breathing is a part of respiration. So now you know respiration. Respiration means, you know, you breathe. Yes or no, we breathe. Breathing is also a part of respiration. And during this respiration, the oxygen what, that we take in is used, utilized by the body. Okay? We breathe in oxygen and we give out carbon dioxide. So that is respiration. Okay? In respiration, the oxygen we breathe in is used by the body and carbon dioxide is given out. Breathing is a part of respiration. So let us see. Do organisms respire? Yes, we human beings, we respire definitely. So we are, we are living. We respire through these organs called lungs. Yes, animals and human beings, we respire through a respiratory organ called lungs. What about an earthworm? See, earthworm, do earthworms have lungs? Yes, how do they breathe? They don't have lungs, students. Then how do they breathe? The uh, earthworm, they breathe through their skin. Amazing, right? So the air contains oxygen. So they breathe in the air or oxygen through their skin. See, I breathe through my skin as long as it stays wet. The earthworm says, Okay, so the earthworm is saying it breathes through the skin as long as it is wet. You know that when you take an earthworm uh, out from the soil and keep it in the sun, it dies. Because their skin gets dry and they cannot take in the oxygen. It dies because it is dry. Now, as long as it is wet, they breathe through their skin. So earthworm also respire. Then what about fishes? Fishes respire through their gills. Yes, just the other day we talked about the gills. Fishes respire through the gills. Then what about plants? Yes, plants, do they respire? Do they breathe? Yes, they breathe. They don't have lungs or gills, but they breathe. See, oxygen at night, during night especially, they take in the oxygen and give out, they also give out carbon dioxide. This is a cellular respiration of plant. Okay, so plants also respire. So that means living organisms, we respire. Or living organisms breathe. Okay, the next, let us see. Do living organisms respond to stimuli? What? What did, this, what did I just say? Stimuli. Do we respond, or that means re reply. Do we respond to stimuli? What is a stimuli? Students, what is a stimuli? Let us see, what is a stimuli? Changes in our surrounding Okay, any changes near us in the air or wherever, changes in our surrounding that makes us respond to them are called stimuli. A uh, singular form is known as a stimulus. Okay, the plural form of that is stimuli and singular is only one means stimulus. So what is a stimulus or what are stimuli? There are changes around us. Like for example, for example, uh, you see a pan, of milk in the gas, you touch it accidentally, but you, you find out it is very hot. Then what happens? You just, ouch, you shout and then you scream and then you just leave the pot like that, even though it is filled with milk. Yes or no? See, that means your hands feel the heat, the hotness of the pan. So how do you, you, you react? How do you react if you touch a hot object? You take back your hand, yes or no? So that heat 
the hotness is the stimulus. The change in the surrounding, that means the heat, the hotness of this pan or the gas or the stove, that is the stimulus, okay? So now you know what is a stimulus, okay? Then example, other examples, whether it is a chemical in the air, like for example, you pass through a bakery and then you smell, wow, the smell of cakes, fresh bread, then, and you smell the you know, chicken fry, there's chemicals in the air makes you, you know, smell it. So that is also a stimulus, students. The smell is all, also a stimulus, okay? Then the cold. If it is cold, then you go and wear hot, uh, warm clothes. Yes or no? Cold is also a stimulus. You react to it. You respond to it by wearing warm clothes or by, uh, you know, uh, keeping yourself near the fireplace. That is a stimulus. Pain, pain, okay? If something pierces you, cuts you, then you feel something. That is a stimulus. Heat, if it is too hot, you switch on the fan or fan yourself. That is a stimulus. Heat is also a stimulus. Sound, if you listen to music, then you like it and you beat, you start dancing, yes or no? You're responding to the sound. So sound is also a stimulus. So all this, are different stimuli. So we respond to it. Human beings respond to it. Well, then what about animals? Do animals respond to stimuli? Yes, definitely. You see, look at a dog. Okay, it is keeping quiet. Now, once you bring a fresh meat near it, it'll they'll start watering. Their mouth start watering. It is a reaction to a stimulus. So animals also respond. The stimulus. All right. Then what about the plants? Do they respond to stimulus? Can they move from one place to another? If someone come and chops them down, they cannot move. But definitely even plants, they respond to stimulus. Like for example, this. This is a bulb, okay? A light, a light of bulb. You can see the flower growing towards it. Yes? The flower is facing the light. If you keep the light bulb on the side, then the flower will bend and search for the light. So if this is not stimulus or responding, then what is, children? Yeah, so plants also respond to stimuli, like it is responding, like it is moving according to the light, okay? Do you know this plan? Yes, I'm sure all of you have, you know, played with this. This is a touch me not plan or it is mimosa, okay? Botanical name is mimosa putica. So this, if you touch it, what happens? It becomes se, it becomes shy and then they will close up. Yes or no? So it is responding to your touch. Yes, students? So plants also respond to stimulus. So that means living organisms, yes, living organisms respond to stimuli. The next, living organisms and excretion. Repeat after me students, excretion. What is excretion? Excretion means the removal of waste or getting rid of waste by organisms is known as excretion. Once more, what is excretion? Excretion means removing the waste. Do you remove your waste? Yes, you go for urination and we go potty. See, all these are removing our waste from our body. Yes or no? Going to the washroom, you know, for urination and for doing potty. All this is the process of excretion. So human beings, we excrete. So excretion is the process of getting rid of waste by organisms known as excretion. Not all the food that is eaten is completely used. Only a part of it is utilized by the body. The rest is removed from the body as waste. So see children, how much, however amount you eat, not all the food that you eat is used by the body, okay? Some of them are removed and that is excretion. Then we have plants. 
do the plants excrete? Have you ever seen the plants going for potty? No? Some plants or most of the plants they can, they have the capacity. Some plants, uh, I mean most of the plants, they have the ability to, you know, store waste in parts of their plant body. So that uh, in a way that it doesn't harm their uh, part as a whole, okay? Most plants, they have the ability to store waste in some parts of their plant body in a way that doesn't harm them. But while some, some plants, they will remove the waste in the form of excretions, uh, in the form of secretions. Secretions, sometimes, you know, you see in a tree, like especially in a peach tree, you'll find like gum gum structures, a gum gum thing, you know, coming out, right? So all these are secretions. So they remove some plants, they remove waste in the form of secretions, okay? So living organisms and animals also, they do, yes, animals, the cat, the dogs, we take them for a walk to remove the waste, yes or no? So animals also, they excrete, plants, they excrete. So living organisms excrete, okay? Then what is reproduction? Do all organisms reproduce? What is reproduction? Reproduction means the process of producing young ones of their own for the continuity of life. What is reproduction? Do organisms reproduce? Reproduction means producing young ones. Yes, I have a daughter at home. That is reproduction. Okay, your dog has given birth to puppies. That is reproduction. Your cats give rise to, you know, kittens. That is reproduction. That is reproduction, producing young ones in order to continue life, okay? In order to continue life, that is reproduction. So do all organisms reproduce? Let us see. Yes, we human beings, we reproduce, we give birth to a young baby boy or a baby girl, yes or no? They will grow up and they themselves will become mother or father. And it goes on. Life goes on like that. What about a bird? See? Those birds? Yes. So birds, they reproduce. These animals, chicken, pig, horse, cow, you know, goat, duck, all these animals reproduce. They produce young ones, right? Then what about plants? Of course, plants, they reproduce. They give us fruits and the seeds that is inside the fruits, the seeds that is inside the fruits will grow into a plant. Again, it will give us food and then life goes on. Even though the big tree die again, another young tree, their young one will again grow. Even if we die, our children will live. Okay, and then life goes on. So, organisms reproduce. Okay, organisms reproduce. So these are the characteristics of living organisms. Also, organisms move. Yes, living organisms move from one place to another, even animals and even plants. Okay, so organisms move from one place to another. Plants do not move, yes. Plants do not move from one place to another, but like I said, they show the movement in the direction of the sun, right? In opening and closing of flowers and leaves. Also, water and minerals move from one part to another inside the plants. So, living organisms move. The plants cannot move from one place to another, but they can move their flowers, okay? Open up the flowers, close it, open up leaves and close it. Movement of the flower according to the direction of the sunlight or the light. So organisms move. So the characteristics of organisms that we just studied are organisms need food, they grow, they respire, they respond to stimuli, they excrete, they reproduce, and living organisms shows movement. So these 
are the characteristics of living organisms. Now, if somebody asks you, can you tell me some characteristics of living organisms? Then it is very easy, right? So keep all these things in mind, students. And until the next class, you take care and bye-bye.